with the Holy Spirit. Now, um, first, I want to talk about what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit because people could have different interpretation. Okay, based on the scripture, this is my explanation of being filled with the Holy Spirit. First, is having a very intimate relationship with God. So it's mainly an intimate relationship with God. That's the first thing. Second, turning away from sins that the person doesn't live in sin. And third, following God's will and the Great Commission that the person is not just experiencing the Holy Spirit for his own enjoyment, but he is following God's will that he is obeying God and serving God and following the Great Commission and the Great Commandment to love God and love people and preach the Gospel and whatever Jesus had taught them that he would teach people to obey and then dedicate our lives to God that our life is dedicated to God and five, fifth is doing things for God's glory and not our own glory it's that we are filled with the Holy Spirit then then we are doing things for our uh, it's for God's glory to glorify God so that people will say God is so good and then being filled with the Holy Spirit is continuous it is different from a one-time experience of the Holy Spirit because there are many people who went to a meeting and experienced the Holy Spirit and then they thought they were filled with the Holy Spirit actually they just experience the Holy Spirit. Experiencing the Holy Spirit one time is different from a continual experience, uh, a continual feeling of the Holy Spirit. It's different from a one time experience. Just one time experiencing the Holy Spirit doesn't mean the person is filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit means a long term good relationship with God. And I would define it like this. The long-term relation of being filled with the Holy Spirit is firstly that anytime this person prays he experiences God's peace and love and joy and presence and motivation and transformation. Anytime he comes to God that he can experience God's presence and his transformation. And secondly he can pray for people and then people can experience the peace and love and joy and transformation of God. That people, that he can help people to experience uh, the work of God. So being filled with the Holy Spirit is not just an experience, but it's experiencing God's nature. Experience God, experiencing God's nature, experiencing God's power, that we can carry the power of God that any time we can experience Him and then when we pray for people, people can experience the Holy Spirit. Okay, ways that people can experience the Holy Spirit. So according to the Bible, what are some ways that we can experience the Holy Spirit? First, peace. John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. So Jesus said, I give you the peace. That means at the beginning, we don't have it. And then when he gives the peace to us, we experience the peace of God. So it's something God gives to us. It's not like some people think that the peace of God is just when we think about God, think about heaven and the goodness of God, and then we feel peaceful. It's not just that. But Jesus gives that peace to us. That means when we experience the Holy Spirit, suddenly we feel very peaceful. Suddenly the burdens go away. That we feel the peace of God. And then secondly, burdens removed. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. So when we are heavy laden, we come to God and He'll give us rest. That means the burdens will go away and we'll find peace and rest. And body in rest and comfort. Psalm 16, 9, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory <coughs> rejoices. 
my flesh also will rest in hope. So when we have a close relationship with God, our soul, our spirit will rejoice and our flesh also rest in hope. So we can experience the Holy Spirit in our soul, in our spirit, and in our body, that we can experience peace and rest. And then love, Romans 5.5, 5, because the love of God has been poured out into, in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So the Holy Spirit is poured into our heart that, and He brings the love of God, that the love of God has been poured out into our heart by the Holy Spirit. <coughs> that He'll give us that love, that we can experience God's love. And then in the healing, Isaiah 61, 1, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So many people experience the Holy Spirit and they experience that the healing of the brokenhearted, that uh, they experience uh, the healing, the inner healing, and physical healing. By His stripes we are healed. And then uh, uh, you lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed so that we can experience the healing of God, the physical healing. Demons being driven out, Mark 16, 17. In my name they will cast out demons, that we can cast out demons, and then signs will follow those who believe, that miracles will follow those who believe, that we can cast out demons and lay hand on the sick and they will be healed. And Jesus has promised to give us the power of the Holy Spirit for evangelism. So the power of the Holy Spirit is for evangelism. Acts 1.8 But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That the Holy Spirit will come upon us to give us power. Now, the point is, what does this power mean? Now, um, in uh, some verses, that it says clearly that um, this power in evangelism is the power to, to give um, salvation and, you know, to the power to be with us. Chapter 15, verse 18. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Holy Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about to Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So here in Romans 15 verses 18 to 19 it says that, that Christ has been accomplished through me, that those things that Christ has accomplished through me in words and deeds, it's not just word, but also in action, in words and action. To make the Gentiles obedient, to make the Gentiles obey in mighty signs and wonders. So in miracles, in mighty signs and miracles, by the power of the Spirit of God. So it's by miracles. It's by word, the Word of God, and also deeds of the Holy Spirit by mighty signs and miracles. So this, uh, Jesus, when He said that, receive power and the Holy Spirit come upon you, is firstly the power to preach the Gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit to, accom uh, to accompany the preaching of the Word of God but also um, the signs and miracles that uh, accompany the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will bring the signs and wonders that, as Paul said in uh, chapter, uh, Romans 15, 18 to 19. And then another place is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Okay, there it says that um, 
in verse 2, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Now, some people, they, when they see this old, Paul just talked about Jesus and Him crucified. But when you read on, you find that that doesn't just mean Jesus Christ. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith would not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So he said that, that um, when he talked about uh, the, you know, he know nothing except Jesus Christ and Him crucified, it doesn't mean that he denies the Holy Spirit. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration, demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith would not be in wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So, um, here it says that, that in his preaching, that is demonstration of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. And not in wisdom of man, but in the power of God. So these two verses, uh, these two places, that um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 2 to 5, and also Romans 15, verses 18 to 19, it talks about that, that in our preaching, it's not just the Word of God, but also uh, the, the work of the Holy Spirit and with miracles and signs that follows. So we then we understand that you know the Holy Spirit is not just just uh, you know working through the Word of God, but also working through miracles. So this uh, Acts one eight it talks about receive power. It's the power of miracles and also power of the Holy Spirit to convert people to change people. Now in Acts two seventeen. God says that His will is to fill all flesh with the Holy Spirit and then they would have miracles in Acts 2.17 and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So here God says that it will come in the last days that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Of course, it would mean Christians, that God wants to pour His Spirit on all Christians, but many Christians don't accept the full work of the Holy Spirit. Many Christians just accept the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit to, for people to believe in Jesus and not in miracles. They don't think that today that God can perform miracles. That, you know, that it's... Uh, that the supernatural sign will not follow. And here, Jesus, uh, God specified what kind of signs will follow the Holy Spirit. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So there will be prophecy. And also they will see visions and dream dreams. So these are supernatural visions and supernatural dreams. That means Christians will receive, God wants to fill all Christians so that we can receive the messages from God. Now, of course, some people have uh, very strong uh, gifts of seeing visions to prophesy and to dream dreams, and this is very real. Although there are prophets uh, who are just prophesying out of their own will, there are some prophets like that, that they're not, they're not really sure that those uh, messages he received is from God, and they will say it. There are prophets like that. But there are people who really receive from God. I have met people like that. It's very real. It's very real that people can receive messages from God. You know, uh, one time, actually two times, when I was persecuted by the traditional church because I, w I, I started ministering uh, in a traditional church and then I experienced an infilling of the Holy Spirit. And then the traditional church, some people were, were trying to attack me trying to get rid of me because of the work of the Holy Spirit. And then, um, and then there was one 
woman uh, prophet, a prophetess. She saw me in a meeting. Now she didn't know me, but she knew a friend that I know, that I knew. And then she was talking to him. And then I came to talk to him also. And then she, this prophetess turned to me and said, I'd like to pray for you. And then when she prayed for me, she told me that, that there is something that will happen to me, that some people could be attacking me, that I could be facing some difficulty. This is one prophetess that didn't know me and then suddenly saw that. And then uh, another prophet that he was leading a meeting and then he prayed for many people. And when he, it come to my turn, it just take him a few seconds and then he start to say there are groups of people who are trying to attack you. So these two prophets, they saw what is going to happen to me. So th they were really receiving messages from God. Now, not all spirit-filled Christians uh, can prophesy, but we all receive messages more than before we were filled with the Holy Spirit. Like for myself, I received many good teachings from God. How to take care of sins, how to take care of uh, overcome negative thinking and negative emotions, how to make the best of our life, how to raise up people to serve God. All this that God gave to me. And I thank God for this uh, teaching from God, that God is teaching me. And I thank God for that, uh, for that, for that gift. And so that's receiving message from God. That in a way is, is prophesying for God. That God gives me messages that He wants me to, to uh, say it out to people. And also to see visions and dream dreams. There are some people that can see visions and, and dream uh, special dreams from God. That see, they see some visions from God. So here it says very clearly that God wants to pour out His Holy Spirit upon all Christians. But many Christians don't accept that. And Jesus promised to give us miracles in Mark 16 verses 15 on. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They would take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly, uh, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And then it says later that you know uh, that the signs will f follow them to uh, to convince people of the word of God. So the purpose of the miracles are to convince people of the word of God. And here Jesus is talking about preaching the gospel to the whole world. So this is for the whole New Testament era. That when the gospel is being preached to the whole world, then signs will follow those who believe. Now some people say the miracles are only for the early church. That now there is no more miracle. Or some people say that there will be no, no one with spiritual gifts, special supernatural spiritual gifts. This is happening to many people that they do receive uh, supernatural spiritual gifts. That there are some people who feel, who are filled with power to pray for the sick to be healed. And there are people who really receive the gift of prophecy. Now, uh, there is a man called Robert Learden. Learden. Uh, you can find him on, online in uh, YouTube. Robert Learden. L-I-A-L-D-O-N and Roberts with an S at the end and he talked about God's generals that many people who are filled with the Holy Spirit and one person he talked about and he said he was very impressed was Catherine Kuhlman and he described one time when he was a child he saw Catherine Kuhlman performing a miracle that there was a nun whose hands were crooked and could not stretch out. And she was sitting on a wheelchair that some other nuns were pushing her into the meeting of Catherine Kuhlman. And then when Catherine Kuhlman was praying on a stage, and then there were people who started to get healed. 
and this nun suddenly his her bones cracked open and Roberts heard the sound of the bone being stretched out <coughs> and heard this bone uh, sound of the bone and then the hand was totally stretched out and then this nun tried to stand up and the other nuns helped her to stand up and then she started to walk and so this was one miracle that Robert Learden saw with his own eyes and and Robert Learden could really see this person was at first sitting on wheelchair and her hand were crooked and he, she was healed instantly and uh, Catherine Kuhlman was not laying hand on her she was just praying on stage and then there were different people who uh, said that they were healed so this is really a gift of healing and for myself I have experienced healing for a number of people many times the first time that this happened to me actually you know at first I didn't believe I don't I didn't think I would have this gift I didn't think that we can still have healing today it was after I experienced the Holy Spirit when uh, the uh, evangelist from Argentina came to Hong Kong and then he laid hand on me and I felt power like electricity enter me and a strong love enter me I was so filled with love I was so touched with love that I cried for a long time and I said I didn't know I can experience God like that and then I said I want to keep this relationship with God I want to keep praying spend more time praying and so starting from that day I spent much more time praying and a second thought came to me was if he can perform miracles like that that God can use me too now my gift might be different but I will have you know similar gifts so I spent more time praying and I thought it would I would have to wait for a long time before I can pray for people and saw miracles but it was just a few days later and one of my member said that she had evil spirit and asked me to cast out demons from her and when I lay hand on her that she saw she said that she felt something came out from her hands and she was convinced that she had evil spirit because when she went to that same evangelist meeting at the moment she entered the room she was very uncomfortable but when she stepped out of the room then she felt okay but as soon as she was walked back in the room uh, in a meeting place then she felt very uncomfortable because she has worshipped many deem, uh, idols and then I asked her why didn't you go out to be prayed for and she said she was afraid and then after the meetings and then she asked me to do that for her and then when I prayed for her she said she felt something left her fingers and her toes and in that same time I pray for the people who were present and one person told me that she experienced power when I lay hand on her so that was the first time that I realized this and then I pray for more people in the church and then they experience different things some people cry for a long time and they said that they had uh, experience of being hurt in the past and now they were they were healed uh, of the hurts in the past and they feel the burdens go away and they they were convicted of their sins and so different people said that they were greatly changed and they experienced a strong power of the Holy Spirit entering them and then uh, a few months later a church has invited me to go and preach there and I asked the preacher can I lay hand on the people he said it's okay uh, uh, but you have to go into a room to pray for them to see who is willing and so he asked the people who is willing to enter a room and then I lay hand on them and after I lay hand on them I asked them did any one of you experience anything and then there was a old lady she jumped up and said I had shoulder pain and now it's healed and and she was moving her shoulder to show that now she's fine and then there is another old lady who jumped up and twist her back and said that she had backache and now it's healed and there was another woman she said that she had evil spirit and then we spent some time casting out the evil spirit 
And that was the first time I realized that healing can still happen today. And after that, many, many times, I prayed for people, they were healed. And there was one uh, lady, one time I went into the mission field, and one lady heard that there was a special meeting. She came from a long way away, and she had breast cancer, and she had pain for over a month. And then she came, she told me her about her sickness, and then, and then I told her, relax and enjoy God, just think of God loving you. And then I prayed with her to enjoy God, and the joy of the Lord came down. Now for me, I experienced the joy of the Lord any time. A few months after I experienced the Holy Spirit, um, I, w I attended a meeting that uh, the many people experienced the joy of the Lord, and I treasure that. And I spent much time praying that night and every day after that to keep that joy. And after that, every day, every time, whenever, <coughs> whenever I think of God, whenever I pray to God, the joy of the Lord will come out. And it's very real. And so, at that time, I prayed for this lady, and I said, relax and let the Holy Spirit work in your life. And then she started to have joy, and she was full of, filled with joy. And after the prayer, she said, oh, my pain went away. And then later she went home, and then she contacted me online and told me that she went to a doctor and examined her and said that all the cancer were gone, was gone. And I was shocked. I put this online. Uh, this is in Chinese that God can use us to, like this today. And there are many times that I lay hands on people and they were healed, and also even on the phone. I prayed for people on the phone uh, for healing and for, to cast out demons, and then there were many people that said that they were healed. And you look in uh, face YouTube and look for Pastor Yip, and then look for healing, and then you can see um, many times there were people being healed there are many times that are in Chinese. There are some that are in English. And so this, this is real. God is real. God, the healing of God is real. That signs will follow those who believe. And in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Now for me, when I start to speak in tongue, it came naturally. Now I, I, I would say, don't you know, tell people to speak in tongue. So, because speaking in tongue comes from the Holy Spirit, we don't tell people to start to speak in tongue or trying to mimic speaking in tongue. Or some people say, try to say hallelujah, hallelujah, and then you become faster and faster, and then you suddenly become, it becomes tongues. That's not how you know, speaking in tongue comes. It should not come by artificial operation. It should come from just loving the Lord, praising God. And then the Holy Spirit comes and fills our heart. So we should not just make people speak in tongue. Uh, rather, we should help people to say, when the more open you are to God, when you love God, when you worship God, when you desire God, you can experience His peace, love, and joy. This, is, this comes from the presence of God. It's God who brings you love, joy, and peace. And it's from the power of God. So when you pray more, you open your heart to God, and then uh, His power will come. His, the Holy Spirit will come to you. So I encourage people just to love God and to believe that God is loving us, to enjoy God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We appreciate you. We enjoy you. Hallelujah. We love you. Hallelujah. And let's sing to God. And open the heart and just relax in God. And many people experience the Holy Spirit, experience the peace, love, and joy. And then some people start speaking in tongues. So this is something that, that can happen to people who have a close relationship with God. And some people also experience the joy. I have prayed for many people to experience the joy of the Lord. And then again, I did not tell them to just look for joy, but to look for God, to seek God, to desire God. And then they experience uh, the joy of the Lord. So, uh, you know, for me, I start to speak in tongue one time when there was a meeting 
and a pastor said to my member, one of my members speaking speak in tongue, and then the pastor said to that that member and said, speak in tongue. And then he started to speak in tongue because he already uh, knows how to speak in tongue. And I was standing behind that pastor. And when he said that, my lips and my tongue and my teeth start to vibrate. And then one of the pastors said, this is the tongue coming. The speaking tongue is coming to you. So that is how it started. It didn't start from any artificial work of men. It comes from a time when I prayed to God and then God gave that to me. And also they would take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Now this, I think, is for the time of persecution. When we are persecuted, that God can protect us when they put us into a, a place with uh, many serpents or they force us to drink poison that God can protect us. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So we can lay hands on the sick and recover. So Jesus here explained that signs and miracles will follow those who believe. Those who believe. Now here, this belief doesn't mean just believe in Jesus as Savior, but who believes that they can have miracles. There are many people who believe in Jesus as Savior, but they don't believe that they can have miracles and they never see miracles. But there are people who believe that, yes, Lord, the Lord can perform miracles now. And the more they pray, they see miracles happen to them. So this is something that can happen to us. Okay, and then God can give us supernatural spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 8, talk about word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Here it means that, that we can say words of wisdom. And also words of knowledge that we did not know something about a person. And then God gave us that knowledge that we can speak, that speak out, say things about the person that we did not know before. But at that time, God gave it to us. Now, it can also be words of knowledge of the mysteries of God, the things that God revealed to us, that we know certain things that God wants us to know. And then faith. Now, here faith is not just faith uh, for salvation, but faith that God can perform miracles and do great things and raise our life to a high level. And also gift of healing, that God can give us healing. And then the working of miracles and prophecy and discerning of spirits. There are a number of people who can see evil spirit or sense evil spirit present. And, and then also know what kind of evil spirit a person might have. And then also different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Now, when Paul talked about these spiritual gifts, he didn't say these spiritual gifts will stop because there is a teaching called, uh, um, uh, I don't know exactly in English, but it, it means it's the termination of the spiritual gifts. This teaching called termination of spiritual gifts, that the spiritual gifts is only present, was only present in the early church. And after the full revelation of the whole Bible, there is no more miracles, no more uh, special miracles or prophecy that people don't have this uh, spiritual gifts of healing anymore. But we still see that today. And so this teaching is contrary to fact. And also in 1 Corinthians tw chapter 12, Paul never said that it would stop. Paul talks to us and says, this is, these are the gifts that God can give to you. And it doesn't say it will stop, so it won't stop. And also, the, in the passage of uh, Mark 16, we just read, it says, go into the world and preach the gospel to all, every creature. So this includes the time of the preaching of the gospel in the New Testament period. And there will be that we can cast out demons and also lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So for the whole New Testament era, we can have miracles. So when we believe in God who can perform miracles, we can see miracles. But it's very important to understand that the, the miracles are for the verification of the Word of God. It's not just for the miracles. Now some people just pay attention to miracles and don't pay attention to preaching the Word and teaching the Word. It's very important that we understand the miracles are for the verification of the Word of God to testify to the Word 
of God so that people will believe in the Word of God. So it's for the preaching of the gospel and for helping people to believe that God is real and His Word is real. Now how can we be filled with the Holy Spirit? I see from this verse that Jesus said, God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. So one key to being filled with the Holy Spirit is worship in spirit and in truth. Now spirit, what does that mean? It includes worship with our soul and our spirit. And our soul includes the mind, the will, and the feelings. Now all people have the mind and the will and the feeling. But the non-Christians, their spirit is dead. They don't have a living relationship with God, so their spirit is dead. But for Christians, our spirit has been revived, so we have the spirit and the soul, so we have the mind, will, and feelings. And then we start to work, you know, to build up a mind to worship God. To worship God in spirit will include worship in the soul and the spirit. So the whole mind agrees with the Bible and God's will. The whole mind, what does that mean? That, that we believe what God's word is true, the Bible is true, that God's promises are true, and God will perform these things, and God's way is the best way. God's will is the best. So I, I agree that following God is the best. So that's the first thing in the mind. Now for some people, the mind is like this. They just, you know, uh, logically think of God, and anything they cannot accept logically, they will say this is not uh, uh, this is not God's will. For instance, they say miracles are not, uh, they don't happen anymore. So they deny the presence of the miracles. So their, their relationship with God is stopped by the mind because the mind doesn't totally believe. The mind is controlled by human logic. But what I mean here is the mind is the whole mind agrees that God is all powerful, He is full of love, the Word of God is all true, and, and God can perform miracles and do great things now, and following God, obeying God is the best thing we can do for our lives and for other people's lives. So we worship with the whole mind and say, God, you are so good, you are so wonderful, you are almighty, you can bless us all in, uh, in every way. And the will that we decide to follow and obey God. We want to dedicate our whole life to God. I want to dedicate every breath of my life, every moment of my life to God. I want to be used by God. So that's the will. And like for myself, I'm already 71 years old. And I could retire and can just relax every day. But I choose not to retire. I choose to continue to serve God. I will serve God until I die. Even on my deathbed, when people visit me, I'll pray for them. I'll say words of encouragement to them. I will tell them, you know, love God and serve God and God will bless your whole life. And it's the best thing to love and serve God. Even when, uh, uh, before I die, I will tell people that. I will not be crying. I will be very happy. I will tell people, very soon I go to heaven and so uh, don't cry for me, just rejoice for me because I will see Jesus very soon and that's my hope for a long, long time. In my whole lifetime, I want to see Jesus and I will see Jesus very soon. So rejoice because I'm going to see Jesus very soon. And then feelings. Now in the Bible, it talks about God's feeling toward us. That, For instance, the Bible says that, you know, that will a mother forget her suckling child, baby, no, she won't. Even if she does, God the Father will not forget us. And also in Zephaniah 3.17, Zephaniah 3.17, it says that God delight in us and He quiet us with His love and He rejoice over us with singing. He will rejoice over us with singing. He is full of joy. When we repent, the whole heaven is full of joy. So God has his whole feelings toward us. He rejoices over us with singing. God is just is not just using his mind to love us. His, his all his feelings are loving us. So if God loves us with all his feelings, we should also love God with all our mind, all our soul, all our strength. 
with all our hearts, the whole person love God. So that will include the feelings toward God, that we have feelings toward God and say, I really delight in God. Now that is about feelings. Delight in God and God will give you the desires of your heart. And God will, ra will raise you up to the high place that you become an important person. So when we delight in God, God will bless us. So when we pray, we don't just pray. We just say, we'll say, <coughs> God, I really delight in you. I rejoice in you. I enjoy you. I like you. I really appreciate you. I like to be with you. I enjoy you. So I hope that we build up these feelings. Now when we build up these feelings with God, it's already very close to worshiping with the Spirit. When we can really love God, like God, and delight in God, that we already are uh, uh, very close to being uh, to worship with the Spirit. And worship with the whole inner being. The whole inner being is, being is worshiping God. So how can we be filled with the Holy Spirit? That a whole person, the whole mind say, I agree with God. I agree with the Word of God. I want to follow God totally. And my will, I dedicate my whole life to God. And by feelings, I delight in God. I like God. I enjoy God. And then the whole being, thank you, Jesus, from my whole being. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you, Father. I worship you, Father. And then when we cry out to God from our spirit, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Then it's easy for us to experience it more and more. The experience is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness, and also transformation. So we want to spend more time loving God with all our soul and all our spirit, and also and truth. That means we agree with the Bible. We agree with the truth. We follow the whole truth. It's very important that we keep the whole truth. There are people who look for being filled with the Holy Spirit, but they don't follow the Bible. They don't explain the Bible. It's very important that we read the Bible carefully and explain it carefully to people and analyze it to understand what does the Bible, what is the, uh, what is the Bible saying. Okay, four kinds of prayers to build up the relationship with God. First, prayer of grace. That God is loving me, God is laying His hand upon me, so it's God is blessing me. God is blessing me. God likes me. God wants to be with me. God wants to bless me. Now this is not pride. This is what the Bible says. That God desires us. He wants to be with us. You know, that He desires us even with jealousy. That when we love anything more than God or close to the level that we love God, God is jealous. So, 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 so God is loving us with very powerful love. and So God is loving us. God is, is really delighting us. God wants to be with us. And so when we worship Him, He really delights in us. When we love Him, we, He really delights in us. So this is prayer of grace. It's from God to man. God is loving me. God is pouring His blessing upon me. That's from God to man. And then prayer of worship is from man to God. Lord, I love you. I glorify you. I like you. I depend on you. I need you. So it's saying to God, I worship you. Now I add in words of feelings. I like you. I delight in you. I enjoy you. I need you. I hold on to you. So I hope we all have this relationship with, with God, that we really hunger for God, that we really delight in God. It's not just of the mind. It's also our whole feelings. And then interactive prayer is combining the two. Whenever I love God, you are happy with me and bless me. And you will raise me up to a high level. So what it means is that when we pray, I know that God is responding. God is happy with me. God wants to bless me. God is pouring His Spirit, spirit upon me. So when we pray, Sincerely, we can believe that, you know, that Jesus said that He will ab abide in me and I will abide in Him and He will bear much fruit. So Jesus said that clearly, that for sure God will be with me 
and then He will also cause us to bear fruit. He will bring changes to our lives. That is His promise. And when we love Him, He'll raise us up to a high place. That's in Psalm 91. That He'll make us honorable. And then He who served Him, the Father, uh, He who served God, served Jesus, the Father will honor Him. So the Bible does tell us that God will respond to our love, to our prayer, to our obedience, to our ministry for Him. God will like us. So when we pray, when we say, Lord, I love you, I love you, we can believe that God is very happy. God rejoices over us with singing, God is happy over me. God is blessing me now. This is not pride. This is believing in the Word of God. When we sincerely love God and obey God, He will He delights in us. Now, this is very important because many people, they are under pressure. They have depression. They have negative feelings. And this kind of prayer is very helpful. And also, some people are under pressure. They have a lot of pressure. And this kind of prayer is very helpful. That we say, Whenever I love you, Lord, you are loving me. You are happy with me. You are smiling at me. You are rejoicing over me. So I can rejoice because God, even God, is rejoicing over me now. God is happy with me now. God is blessing me now. So I really like God. I really desire God. I really enjoy God. So that's interactive prayer that we at the same time we pray to God, we know that God is blessing us. Now this also, not just prayer, interactive action too. Whenever I give a cup of cold water to a little one, I know that God is happy and He will reward, to me, reward me. He is happy with me. Now this is not pride. And we are not just looking at a reward, but this is the promise of God that He will reward us even when we give people a cup of water to give those you know, uh, who belong to Christ a cup of water, He will reward us. So whenever we preach the gospel, whenever we help people spiritually, whenever we pray for people, when we serve God sincerely, we know that God is happy. So this is interactive action. Whenever we are serving God, we can tell ourselves, God is happy with me now. Now many times when preachers preach, they will say, Oh, I didn't preach so well today. Oh, I, I should have preached. I should have said that. I didn't say it. So sometimes people just look at what they didn't do. Or they say, oh, my prayer is not powerful enough and people are not healed. So we just look at the things we don't get. Or look at our sins. Now, when we have sinned, we should repent of our sins. And then when we have, when we, you know, sincerely love God or preach the gospel, many times people will reject us. But we say, even when people reject us, God is very happy with me. God is very happy that I am preaching the gospel. So when we preach the gospel and people, people don't believe, we can say, God is happy with me now. Even though people reject it, God is still happy with me. God is rewarding me. God is rejoicing over me because I'm serving Him now. I'm telling people about Jesus. So this is interactive action. That way we can always rejoice in God. That we can always enjoy God, enjoy praying to God, and enjoy serving God. So I hope you understand this. And every time we pray, we can say, Lord, I know that you're loving me. You're blessing me now. You're helping me now. Now, I heard someone, I read someone have this experience. He said he heard of a, someone sp spiritual and he went into his room to hide in his room and see how this person have devotion. And then he saw that this man read, re uh, read the Bible and pray. And then after that, this man said, Oh, Father, and this man who watched him felt was very impressed. Oh, he said, God is his father. Very impressed. <clears throat> now, this is good. I would say this is good. But I would say, why not at the beginning that we say this? <clears throat> Instead of just at the end. We can say at the beginning, Lord, Father, I know you love me. I know you're hugging me now. I know you're blessing me now. Even from the beginning. We can have that confidence because God already said that. He has confidence in me. He loves me. He sincerely wants to bless me. So even from the beginning, I can trust in God. I can, I can believe in God when I start to pray. So I hope 
we all pray like this. Then you have a lot of strength and a lot of joy. Then you say, anytime I pray, God is happy with me. When I pray sincerely, when I follow God sincerely, when I take care of my sins and obey God. Now, if I have any sin, I'll sincerely repent and ask God to forgive me. And God will truly forgive me and then God will bless me. So, you can rejoice in the reaction of God. And we know for sure that God is reacting uh, responding to our, our action toward Him. And then prayer of commitment, that I commit to loving you and serving you and blessing the church, that we commit to serving God, loving God. So we, these four kinds of prayer will build up a relationship with God. Prayer of grace from man to God, I mean from God to man, what God is doing to me now. God is blessing me now. now. God is uh, thinking of me now. God is uh, putting His Holy Spirit upon me now. And prayer of worship, from man to God, that we worship God. And interactive prayer, when we pray, we know that God is responding and God is blessing me. And prayer of commitment, that I commit my life to God. And then pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit. When we pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit, first we need to build up a strong relationship with God and turn away from all sins. Sins can bring evil spirits. So we ourselves must have a close relationship with God and take care of all our sins so that we don't give the devil a foothold, so that we don't have the evil spirit uh, influencing us. Two, we can pray and sing to lead people to believe that God is loving them, to help them and help them to love God. We don't need to shout. Now, it's not forbidden to shout, but we don't have to shout. But it's basically it's saying, oh God, you're loving me now. You're with me now. You're blessing us when we come to you, when we come to you sincerely, you are very happy. For sure you bless us. For sure you'll be with us. For sure you want to bless us. You want to help us. So we believe that. That is the most important thing. And that will help people experience the Holy Spirit. Now I have some recording of prayer, but this is in Chinese uh, mainly. But I can record some prayer in English. And then put in uh, 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 YouTube. Pastor Yip, Y-I-P. You look for Pastor Yip in uh, YouTube. I will record some English prayers and then you can listen to those prayers. And some people listen to my prayer in Chinese and then they experience the Holy Spirit and they experience healing and they experience evil spirit leaving them. So our prayer can bring blessings to people. And then we can lay hand on people. And when we lay hand on people, don't push people. It's very important. Now some people <coughs> want to see people fall down. Now, why do they want to see people fall down? It's for their own glory. They want to show people that they have their anointing. So they push people. And then some people pray for people like this. They don't push people to fall down. But every time this is the head of a person, and this person is laying, and a person is laying hand on him, whenever he moves back a little bit, then he moves his hand forward and keep his head bent. And then he move a little bit, and then he push down more. Keep pushing him so that he has no way to bounce back. So to force him, finally he has to fall down. So why? The reason is just to make people fall down. Now, it's true that people can fall down under the Holy Spirit. But the main thing that helps people is that they experience the love, joy, peace, power, transformation, and, and uh, uh, the renewal of the person. The main thing is not the falling. Now, sometimes when people fall down, they can experience this. But when people push other people, it would offend people and it can stop people experiencing the Holy Spirit. So please don't push people down. And, and God doesn't like that. And people don't like it either. It's just for our glory, and God can see that. And we can see that many places, even many anointed preachers, they will lay on people and they push people, and they push them very hard to push them to fall down. Why? We don't have to do that. So when we lay hands on people, don't push people. Falling does not help people. Experiencing God helps people. Now, if they fall down, fine. But then when they fall, we want to hold them so that they fall gently or someone would uh, hold them be behind so that they won't fall onto the ground. They've let them fall down s softly. And then we can ask them if they have experienced the Holy Spirit to help them remember the experience. If they ex have experienced peace, joy, love, 
kindness, power, uh, healing, then we tell them this is the work of God and this is wonderful. So you want to pray to God more and then you can experience Him more and you remember this experience and every time you pray you want to go back to this experience again. So that every time you pray, you pray totally relaxed and believing God is blessing us. Now it's very important. Some people think it's pushing, pushing, pushing. God, 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 you must do this, you must do this. Actually, it's God who wants to do it. God's who want, God who wants to bless us. So it's not pushing God. Rather, it's opening our spirit. It's when we open our spirit to God, then God can bless us. So when we pray to God, we just believe God is loving me now. God is blessing me now. God is with me now. God is laying His hand upon me now. And God wants me to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! <laughs> so we believe that when we pray, that is the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not shouting. Now, shouting sometimes helps to wake people up. But it's not the shouting that changes people. It's the faith in God. It's faith to believe that God is blessing us. God wants to bless us. It's the faith in God that changes us. And we can ask people what they experience. And they experience something, we tell them, okay, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Please pray more so that, and open your heart every time when you pray so that you continue to experience the Holy Spirit. And experiencing the Holy Spirit can help people in this area. It's helpful to experience God and, uh, and His work. So we can experience God Himself and His work. His peace, love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, healing. To appreciate God and believe in God, when we experience the Holy Spirit will, you know, like for me, experience love, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate God's love pouring into my life. I said, God, you're so wonderful. I thank you for pouring your love into my life and that changed my life and it's so wonderful. That caused me to really appreciate God and believe that God is very real loving us all the time to experience inner healing and body bodily healing that God can come and heal our emotions and our soul and also heal our body and to build up love and zeal for God so it will help us to say God you are so happy we come to you and I want to come to you and the more we experience God to help us to to love God more and to drive out demons so when we uh, it will help you know to drive our demons from people and to guide people in their lives to guide people how to serve God what to do what to say now I received that many times many times I received you know the thought from God that uh, that what would to say to people when I pray for them that God uses that and one time I, I pray for someone and then I said God comforts you and heal your soul and then immediately she started to cry that that uh, the Holy Spirit comes to, you know, the Holy Spirit speaks to me to say the right words to her. And then to receive spiritual gifts and prophetic words, that they can spir receive sp spiritual gifts and words of prophecy, and to lay hands on people to experience comfort, healing, exorcism, and transformation in life. So the life, whole life is transformed, experience God in every way, and serve God and enter the ministry. There are many people who experience the Holy Spirit and then they see that they can have the power of God and then they start to serve God. Okay, now how to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually? So these are the how. First, repent and turn away from all sins. Not just repent, also to turn away from the sins, not to sin anymore. Second, love and follow the Bible. That we follow the Bible. We we really believe the Bible is God's Word and we really follow the Bible and when we teach, we teach the Bible. We don't just teach experiences. Some people just talk about experiences and we want to talk about the Bible. Believe that God wants to fill us. Believe that God Himself wants to fill us. God says, I want to fill all flesh to, you know, anoint, to uh, anoint all flesh with the Holy Spirit. And spend a long time loving God and praying to God. The more time we spend loving God and praying to God, the, the more we can experience God. So when we are walking, when we are cooking, when we are cleaning dishes, when we are brushing our teeth and showering, uh, bathing ourselves, we can 
always love God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. We love you. We love you. And then when the more you open your heart, you can actually feel the power of the Holy Spirit entering. I can feel that every time I pray. And I can feel joy flowing through me. I can feel power going through me. And then, very important to obey God in every area, especially the Great Commission and the Great Commandment to love God and love people and preach the Gospel and also every, to teach everyone uh, the, all the things that Jesus taught us to teach us people to obey and take care of problems in our lives, like negative emotions, negative thinking, sins, uh, uh, problematic relationship with people, we take care of all those things. And laying on of hands by a spirit-filled persons and spirit-filled meetings are helpful. So someone who has spirit-filled laying hand on, on us is helpful, and spirit-filled meetings are helpful. But I want to say that there are truly some false prophets. There are truly some people whose life is problematic. There are people whose life are problematic, and then they lay hands on people. So if, you know, I would suggest to you, if you don't know this person, you don't know that this person is really filled with the Holy Spirit, that his life might, might have problem, don't let him lay hands on you. It's only people you know that they really love God. They want to serve God. They take care of their sins. Then you let them lay hands on you. Because there are some people who actually have evil spirit when they lay hands on people. Because they sin at the same time. Some people, you know, they operate under the power of the Holy Spirit for money. They just want to do it for money. Some people just serve God for money and for their reputation. So there are some people who serve with a wrong attitude and they, they fight with other people. They, they uh, sin. There was one person I saw who prayed for people and then all the people that he prayed for, they, the response is really crazy. They, they kick and jump and, you know, it's very dangerous. They have to have four people holding their feet and take off the shoes. That I think that this person has evil spirit inside him. That the, when he prayed pray for people, the response was overly physical and violent. Now, when we pray for people, some people might shake and have violent response, but it's not kicking people. But this person, when he prayed for people, these people would kick people and become very violent. So I, I think that, you know, and also he has committed many sins, and he talked about his sins. So I think that he has evil spirit. So I want to say to you that people who have evil spirit should not lay hands on other people. So your members who have evil spirit should not lay hands on people. But it's God's will that all Christians should lay hand on the sick because Jesus said the signs will follow those who believe. That's so everyone who believes should have signs to drive out demons and also to lay hand on the sick and be healed. And then so we should train our members, train our members to be filled with the Holy Spirit by loving God, worshiping God, and believing that God is loving us so that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they can pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit, to bring people to Christ. So when we pray for people and they experience peace, love, joy, and we can ask them, have you experienced anything? Sometimes we see that people are crying. We know that they experience some touch of the Holy Spirit, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And we ask them what they experience. And then they say, oh, I've experienced love and comfort. And then we say, well, this is God loving you and blessing you. So do you want Jesus to bless you? And then we lead the person to Christ. I use this method for evangelism. I call it experience God evangelism. That we lay on people and experience the Holy Spirit. And then we ask them, we ask them, it's very important. Ask them, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayers? Ask them to close, keep the eyes closed because when they open the eyes, they might be distracted. So please keep your eyes closed. And I want to ask you, have you experienced anything during the prayer? And then they say yes, and then we ask them what they experience. Now, if they cannot say it, then we can say, can you experience, did you experience something in your heart, in your soul, and in, over your body? Now, some people say they experience peace and comfort, and the burdens go away. And then we say, this is from God. So God is blessing you. Do you want God to continue to bless you, bless your whole life, and give you eternal life? And if you are willing, 
then you can pray with me to confess our sins and ask Jesus to be our Savior, to forgive our sins and give us eternal life. And we praise God and thank God. And then when you trust in Jesus as your Savior, then you are saved. So we can train people to lay hands on people to bring them to Christ. Also lay hands on people for healing. Lay hands on people to drive out demons. But these Christians should be mature. They should be mature spiritually. We help them to grow spiritually. So train your members to grow spiritually and train them to lay hands on people. And then especially those who have the heart to serve God and love people and help people. Those people we want to pay more attention and train them to be serving God in the church. And then the church can grow because people who really love God, who wants to serve God, have the potential, a greater potential to be used by God. So look for people in your church who really respond to God, who love who love God, who wants to serve God, and who experience the Holy Spirit and wants to serve God with the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we train them. And these people, we can train them to be the prayer group, uh, to, to be the uh, people who pray for other people. When people come, we can invite them. Don't force them. Invite them. Do you want, uh, can we pray for you? Can we pray to bless you? Pray for your health. Pray for your strength. Pray for your comfort. Do you want us to pray for you? So we can train people in a church that we can pray for people and this can bring revival to the church that more people are trained by God. Okay? So this is how we raise up people. So I hope that you will raise up people in your church that you train them how to experience the Holy Spirit, to open the heart and experience the peace, love and joy and then the they open the heart more. The more they open, the more they experience the Holy Spirit. And then when they experience the Holy Spirit, they can train, they can be trained to pray for each other. And then they pay attention to ask the other person, have you experienced anything during the prayer? And then if they have, then they know that they carry the power of the Holy Spirit. So we train people to pray for one another. First, they take care of the sins and build up a strong relationship with God. And then they pray, lay hands on each other. And then... Uh, they, they, the other person will tell them what they have experienced and if they have experienced the Holy Spirit then we encourage them you can continue to you know, pray more and let, pray for people so you can help people to experience the Holy Spirit so you can bring people to believe in Jesus and help people to be healed and drive out demons and also bring in a healing so then we can build up this prayer team in the church so I hope you understand this and then do this in your church to raise a prayer team in your church that will serve God. Okay, let us pray together. Please stand up and relax and open your heart to God. And if you have opened, the, if you have experienced the Holy Spirit, you can tell me in the in the uh, WhatsApp group. And uh, so, open your heart right now and relax in God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. You are full of love. You are full of mercy and kindness. You are good. God is so 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 good. He's so good to me. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. He's so good to me. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much. Thank you, Jesus, that you are with us all the time when we trust in you as our Savior, when we love you, when we worship you. You are with us all the time. You are with us now. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We, we rejoice in you. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're a loving God. You're a kind God. You're a good God. You are wonderful to us. Lord, help us. Use our life mightily. Use our life mightily for your kingdom. Help us to bring people to you. Help us to believe in you, to help people to believe in you. Help us to be to bring healing to people. Lord Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. I bow down before you. Praise you and worship you, Lord our King. Hallelujah. 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 Lord Jesus, we love you. And we know that when we love you, you're very happy. And you love us greatly. And you bless us greatly. You rejoice over us with singing. You bless us. Lord Jesus, you're very happy when we love you. When we put you in the first place in our life. When we dedicate our life to you, you're very, very happy. Lord, help us to rejoice in you. Ha, ha, ha. We rejoice in you. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Ha ha ha. Ha 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 